Hey guys, Daniel here. This is another video and in this video I'm actually joined by the legendary Peter Hogan. And for those who don't know, Peter is a comic book writer known for his work in comics such as uh, 2000 AD, Tom Strong. And more recently, his comic Resident Alien was adapted into a TV show uh, on the Sci-Fi channel. It's been pretty big, so he's very kindly agreed to come on for an interview and let me annoy him. Uh, but Peter, thank you so much for coming on. How are you doing today? Well, I'm all right. I'm all right. Is it another sunny day? Uh, we're in the summer. Yeah, it's been nice. It's been nice. Yeah, well, I, I went out yesterday and now I have sunburn. So what better way to you know, relaxed and talking to you here for an hour. So uh, thanks again. And um, but yeah, no, so so many different questions to cover. Uh, so my first question for you is how did you get into comics? How did I get into comics? I've always liked comics. Um, and uh, um, I was, uh, I was in book publishing, I was an editor in book publishing, and I noticed um, warrior web magazine when it came out and i got in touch with des skin and said you know this stuff you're doing is great i'd be interested in doing sort of you know book compilations and that's how i first came across alan moore and uh then my publishing company i was working for shut down and but i stayed in touch with des and sort of through him got to know a lot of people in comics um and by that point i was a journalist and comics was going through a very interesting phase. It was, uh, you know, just around about the time that Dark Knight Returns was happening and Watchmen was happening. So a lot of the magazines that I was writing for um, said, you know about this stuff, go and, go and interview these guys. So I did. And that kind of led to me becoming a comics editor for the 2008D group. And I worked on uh crisis and then they asked me to set up another comic called revolver um and when that all came to an end about a year later then uh i thought well i might as well have a go at writing this stuff myself so that's how it happened yeah and so like growing up were you a comic book fan I was, yeah. I mean, I kind of learned to read on comics, you know, old Batman comics and what have you. Um, and it kind of, you know, came and went. I'd go through phases where I was reading them and then phases when I was. Um, I think sort of like back in late 70s, early 80s, the one thing that everybody read was the X-Men. Um, so I was reading that. And then, like I say, a couple of years after that I discovered Alan Moore and it was like oh you can do you know more interesting things with this so yeah and exactly. so that kind of, yeah that kind of got me hooked properly again yeah and so what was your first comic book work my first comic book work well I did um I was one of three editors uh on the comic relief comic and the very first thing I wrote was a couple of pages in that and then after that, uh, I did um, the classic kind of, you know, 2000 AD, some future shocks, and eventually they let me have a series and then another series. And, you know, um, so and I, wor I worked for 2000 for a few years, two or three years. Yeah. And so like you brought it up, what was it like to get to work on 2000 AD? Um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, I mean, I did... Um, they, you know, they, uh, I did a couple of sort of original things, but I also did, you know, standard classic 2000 characters. I did one Judge Dredd story. I did, um, uh, see, I did a Rogue Trooper story for one of their kind of sci-fi specials. Uh, and I did Sam Slade um, um, with... Um, Ryan Hughes did most of the uh, the ones that I did, and I think we did a really good job on on yeah. Sam. Um, and uh, then I did some uh, Strontium Dog stuff and Durham Red stuff, which was a bit hit and miss. They uh, partly because. 2000 kept changing the what they wanted it was like could you do us a four-part story oh no make it a six-part story oh no can you make it a three-part story instead so that was a you know a bit hit and miss that one but um but yeah no so the sam slade stuff certainly i can i can still bear to look at that yeah and so like do you consider yourself a 2000 ad fan 
not really, because I was, uh, I think a lot of people kind of discover comics with, uh, with 2000. And so that's their, that's their first love, their, you know, their big love. Whereas for me, I'd been reading comics for, you know, donkey's years before 2000 AD came along. So, uh, so I was always more into American comics than British ones, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So who would be your favorite 2000 AD character? Sam Slade? Of the ones that I wrote, yeah, definitely, um, because there's humour there, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, and uh, I think, you know, I mean, it's it's another John Wagner creation, but I think it's a really good one. So yeah, absolutely. And so coming off 2080, you've also got to work on a little known comic called Resident Alien, which uh, it would be great as a TV show. Uh, speaking of which, some of my uh, brilliant uh, sub, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Subway. No, going into something. Segway. Segway. That was it. Oh, you see some more of my <laughs> professionalism there coming through. Uh, segway. So you got to work on Resident Alien. Uh, so how did that come about? How did that come about? I worked with Steve Parkhouse, the artist, uh, on some Sandman spin-off stories for The Dreaming. And we got on really well and we tried to get various other things off the ground that didn't happen. Uh, and eventually one day I said to Steve, um, you know, OK, let's let's give it another go. What would you like to draw? And Steve said he wanted to do a comic on aliens. So we we talked about that and then I went away and thought about it and we came up with the basic idea for Resident Alien and Dark Horse. We sent it to out to a, a few people. Dark Horse fell in love with it straight away. Mike Richardson the publisher yeah. fell in love with it and uh and so we had a chat and he said uh you know well if you do this and this with it you know i'm really interested and um and also he thought right from the beginning that you know this thing might work as as a tv show or a film so, so um so right from the beginning we were kind of thinking about that and uh, you know and it took a long time to happen it took 10 years to happen but you know um uh, but the, you know, and the comics, um, um, you know, carried on for that ten years. You know, very slowly because we were only doing like one a mini series every year or so. But um, you know, I think it's, I think it's turned out better as a result of us doing it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, were you inspired by any previous alien stories? Uh, a bit, yeah. I mean, there was a there was a comedy show. Um, back in the 1960s called My Favourite Martian. Uh, and that was a bit of an influence. And also the David Bowie movie, The Man Who Fell to Earth, that was a bit of an influence. Um, but it was also, you know, it's, it's the idea of an alien being stranded on Earth. It's, it's not a new one, um, but I think um, nobody had really done it for a long time so that when we did it, it seemed like something new. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, like, how would you describe Resident Alien in your own words without, of course, spoiling the plot or anything like that? Like an alien crashes to Earth, of course. An alien crashes to Earth and uh, and he's stuck here and he doesn't know if his kind of SOS ever got received. He doesn't know if he's ever going to be rescued. And he spends the first sort of three years basically hiding and um, trying to avoid people. And then he gets kind of circumstances mean that he gets drawn out uh and has to you know go and engage with this town and um uh they want him to come and look at a body because he's a doctor and the body is of the town doctor so he ends up becoming the town doctor and he's also kind of you know a little bit bored out of his mind so he gets he's really hooked on kind of detective stories and true crime and how you solve crimes and he ends up becoming a kind of amateur detective really just to kind of try and stay sane yeah absolutely and so like we like was your goal while writing it to kind of stay away from some of the more old alien like tropes did you try and make it very much its own thing yeah well i think for for a very long time uh, you know the whole uh, idea of alien stuff it has been you know the alien as the bad guy or the invader or the villain or the monster 
And we just thought, yeah, this has been done to death. Let's do something different. Let's just have him be a nice guy, you know, um, who's stuck here and is trying to make the best of a bad job. And people really kind of, I mean, the TV show plays it kind of differently. But I think in both cases, um, you know, even with the, the fact that the TV show has got a dark side, Harry is still the guy that you're rooting for. You, yeah. you still kind of want him to, you know, come through this. Um, but just in terms of the comic, I think we, we found very early on that we touched a nerve, you know, re people really responded to it. It was like sort of the time was right to have a good guy alien. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, obviously you put in a few genres, sci-fi, you know, like murder mystery and it's kind of all these genres so did you decide to add in like the whole um mystery subplot as well and things like that where he has to solve yeah them? i did i did i think i had a vague kind of idea that if you took a, two different genres and rubbed them up against each other you might get some interesting sparks and i think that proved to be the case you yeah. know it's, it's like you take old stuff and you make it new just by doing something different with it and so was it fun for you to play with this kind of murder mystery plot where the detective is an alien yeah, it was fun. I mean, I'd never really done anything like a, a detective story or, a, you know, a murder mystery. Um, and there's always a bit, I think maybe I get this from um, having worked with Alan Moore. It's it's like you get this thing of um, uh, everything becomes a bit of a challenge, you know. Yeah. So you think you're not quite sure if you can pull it off or not. So you think, well, OK, let's find out. Let's give it a go. And this was one of those. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, another thing I liked in the comic was how you dealt with the fact that he was an alien and how he's introduced his whole new world full of people. So it's kind of difficult for you to write for an alien because he's not going to be like, oh, hi, what's up? Because that's not how aliens speak. So it's difficult for you to kind yeah. of nail the language. Um, no more than anything else. I think that the, the thing that was different for me this time was that, you know, most of the stuff that I've done has been other people's characters and you know whether it's you know tom strong or the sandman characters or whatever so you've got some kind of idea of who they are and what they sound like and what the whole setup is whereas this was really the first kind of major thing i'd done where i'd created um the whole thing or co-created it with steve so i was kind of finding out who Harry was and how it all worked as I went along. Yeah. Um, and that, that was something new for me. And I think it was something I was probably a bit nervous about before this. Um, but as it happened, it all turned out okay. Yeah. So, and, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. And so did yeah. you have a certain sense of freedom because it's your own world and your own characters, so you can just like kind of do whatever you want? Well, a bit. I mean, I've always had this thing um, with writing stories of, you know, you kind of want to convey um, what it would really be like, you know, what would it really be like if, if an alien was living in your town? How would he feel? So that's the kind of thing. And, you know, Harry's really, um, the the kind of ultimate example of this really because for the reader you know when you look at the, the comic he's he's an alien in every panel on every page um but nobody's reacting to him so as being anything different so that's a bit weird but um but it is that kind of thing of um i don't know just trying to uh, you know to to make the unusual um stand out really i mean and i think that the more you ground it in reality the more you ground it in sort of everyday stuff um the more effective it's going to be you know because if you've got an alien surrounded by other aliens on an alien world it's like well America. now that's interesting so yeah Absolutely. And so, like, did you think that'd be more, like, visually interesting if for each, like, in the whole book, if, like, you could see him as an alien as opposed to, like, as a human? Yeah, well, we th we thought about doing it if, like, you know, it, it changed back and forth. 
And I thought at the time, this is something they could probably pull off on TV. Um, but, you know, in a comic, it's that much harder. I thought it would be confusing. And also, like I say, you know, the, the good way, the good thing about doing it the way that we did is that even it's, you know, it's very, a lot of the time, it's a very quiet comic. It's just people talking a lot of the time. But you've got an alien right at the heart of it on every page. So which makes it a lot more visually interesting. Yeah. And so how did the title Resident Alien come about? Was that recommended? That was, well, yeah, no, that came about um, a long, long time ago. I was visiting a, an English friend in New York who's a, a, a rock journalist and science fiction writer called Mick Farron, who is long dead now, unfortunately. But he'd been living in New York for a while. And um, so I was, uh, I asked him you know how do, how do you manage this it's like I know he was a married he was married to an American woman and I said so have you got a green card because of this and he went no I've got one of these things and he pulled out this card that said resident alien and uh, and both of us were laughing because we thought of you know aliens um, and that kind of stayed in the back of my mind for years and years and years and then when we decided to do this story I thought you know you're right daniel you look like you're frozen oh yeah sorry you cut out a little bit there sorry okay. you're back now you're back where now. did you get to the <laughs> uh, no you were just talking about the resident alien bit and so then we proceeded to name the book resident alien yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's the thing yeah. That's just essentially the story there. Um, but yeah, so ever since the first arc, which was, I believe, Welcome to Earth, did you have a plan on how you were going to end it? Or like over time, did you say, okay, for the next volume, we'll do this for the next volume? Yeah, it's kind of, um, well, at the, at the start, we were just happy to have, uh, you know, one series. We weren't entirely sure that we'd get to do more than that. So it kind of, um, yes, the second series flowed on from that, and then the third series flowed on from that. But by the time we got to the end of the third series, um, I figured that there were a couple of things um, that we would sooner or later have to deal with. And one of them was the fact that um, uh, we'd, we'd have to answer the question, you know, like, did Harry's SOS get through? You know, are, were the aliens ever going to come to rescue him? And the other one was the whole sort of men in black government agents thing you know we couldn't have them chasing him forever you know we'd have to have some kind of uh, you know resolution to that so from that point on I was I began thinking about how we were going to do all of that and um, and in the current series uh, we do find a way to to deal with it yeah absolutely so without spoiling I believe uh, it was volume six issue six your rides here just came out recently enough that's right. That came out uh, about a week ago. A week so, ago. And so people can pick that up from their local comic book store. Yeah, yeah. It's in the local comic book shops now. So I'm not I'm not going to tell anybody how it works. <laughs> You're going to have to read the thing. You, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to look in your background, seeing if there's any scripts. You can just see in the background spoilers there, but unfortunately. No, no, no. That's just a load of novels. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in there there's a script. Um, but of course, so you also, you also work with Steve Parkhouse on this, who I got the into as well. So did Steve Parkhouse like design the alien? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we talked about that, and I I had a few suggestions, but all the visual stuff is uh, is mainly down to Steve. So. And yeah, so like, do you think you've worked with Steve for so long that you've kind of know what his sensibilities are and what he can do? So you're like, okay, I know he'll do a good job drawing this or something. Yes, I mean, he's very good. I think he's very good at, at doing. Um, you know what you might call character actors you know they're uh, faces with character um steve sometimes surprises me but uh, you know i think we've kind of we we trust each other we've done enough stuff together that we kind of i kind of trust him to do a good job and i think hopefully he probably trusts me the same kind of way um sometimes he surprises me or don't turn out quite as I'd expected, but, um, um, but you know, it's always good. Yeah, absolutely. And so 
Like, what has it been like to see Resident Alien turn into a TV show? Is that set in for you yet? It's very odd. I mean, I still go through sort of uh, days where I think, you know, oh, they made a TV show out of this. How strange. Um, so, yes, it is very odd. I mean, you know, it's very odd to, um, to think that there are real people out there pretending to be people that I made up. <laughs> you know, that is odd. You know, and the fact that, you know, I named a town Patience and, you know, somebody's painted town signs that read Patience and, you know, all of it. It's all really strange. Um, yeah. I mean, and, you know, and the TV show is very, very different from the comic, as you know, um, but it's still good. It's, it's a good, enjoyable show. I mean, you know, I've got lots of friends who say, you know, this is fantastic. It's something we can watch with the whole family, you know. And there probably aren't that many TV shows that are good that you can do that with, with like teenage kids. So, you know, so that's good. That's, you know, I'm, I'm pleased. Yeah. And so even writing like volume one, etc. do you ever think that someday these, this would soon be translated onto a TV show? You know, I kind of felt that it always would. Um, I didn't know how it would turn out, you know. I mean, it might have turned into it might they might have done a TV show that I hated, but then that was always the risk. Um, but I kind of did feel deep down that it was always going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, have you noticed differences between like the TV show and the comic? Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically everything's different, pretty much. Um, but that's fine, you know, because um, that, they're doing something different and it it kind of achieves different things to what the comic does. But, you know, I think it's possible to like both and uh, a lot of people do. So, again, that's a good thing. And did you also notice some similarities? Like how some, like I know in uh, the first episode, there's the one where he's fishing. That's also like, yeah. like that's kind of pulled from the comic. But did you notice like... Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. They they have done things that are kind of straight. You know, the odd thing that's come straight out of the comic, and I know they've got a few more of those up their sleeves. So yeah, there's that. Um, there's also the fact that um, you know Alan Tudyk, I think, is just fantastic. I mean, you know, you almost think they couldn't have done the show without him. Uh, because, and he's perfect for it. So, and in the minute they told me it was Alan Tudyk, I thought, well, that's kind of dream casting. That's, you know, that's that, this is going to be good. Yeah, and so it's been renewed for a season two. So is that like nice for you to know? Yeah. More Resident Alien soon. Yeah, they start filming um, in the summer, uh, late summer, I think, and then um, you know, so sometime early next year it'll be on the air. So. I assume you're getting a plane to Vancouver just to be like, I'm the creator, you know, let me in. <laughs> well, you know, I was, uh, before the pandemic happened, I was, I was about to get on a plane and, um, you know, go to Canada and see it being filmed, which, um, which I then couldn't do. But so maybe with this next season, I'll, I'll get to do that. Yeah, I think they had you banned from the plane. They were like, okay, just don't let the Peter Hogan on, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably it. But like, so I, like you've gotten to see the characters, of course, that came from your mind onto the big screen. Has that been like funner for you as well? Yeah, it's um, like I say, it's very strange, but um, but it's also it's kind of unusual. I mean, I know a lot of people who've had their stuff optioned and it's either taken forever um, to come up about or else it just never happened at all so it's not something that happens for everybody so i'm i'm very kind of um, very pleased that it's happened to me and so did you just get an email one day that said we're turning this into a tv show or how did that work um uh, well it's been you know like i say it's been uh, you know 10 years or more and what would happen would be about once every year people would tell me that you know all oh, this such and such is interested in doing it and there's lots of meetings and conversations so for about a week or so there's a lot of buzz and then it all just goes away again and then a year later somebody else is talking about doing it so we've had a lot of that um but then finally um they found Chris Sheridan who's became the showrunner of it. And, um, and that's when it sort of started to, um, you know, begin to come together. Um, yeah. 
so from that point on it was like oh chris is writing a script and then we've got to go ahead for do the pilot and then yes they like the pilot they're going to do a season so it's been you know a slow build-up um and then you know they had um uh they had a, a like a premiere for the pilot in new york a couple of years ago um and then um uh, they started filming it and then they had to stop filming it because of the pandemic. Um, so it's, again, it's been kind of like very, uh, a very slow process. And it wouldn't, in fact, they, when they, uh, it, everything went into lockdown, they'd nearly finished filming it all. I think they had just one episode wow. to film. Um, and so there was this long delay until they kind of got the go ahead and they went back in and finished it off. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, of course, like resonating now, have you noticed that more people have become reading the comics now because of it? Uh, that's the kind of gossip that I hear through social media is, is that a lot of people discover it. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, I've been reading it for years. I've loved it for years, um, which is a really nice thing to hear, you know, but um, um, but all of that is new to me. And again, there are loads of people who have, you know, been buying the books or downloading the comics or whatever, who um, who are only now just discovering it. And um, um, so I'm not quite sure how many of them there are at this point, but I'll find sooner or later somebody will tell me. So. Yeah, and so like, do you think that, like since like the first uh, volume, uh, Welcome to Earth, you've kind of discovered Harry more as a character. Like you were kind of finding your footing, but now you have a better grasp of the character of Harry. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I think I do, and uh, it's um, it's strange the way that it's worked out because it you know it's partly because it's all taken place over quite a long period of time, but it's, it's all kind of grown very naturally, very organically. And, um, and yeah, but uh, it's not just Harry, you know, it's, it's, I built, I very deliberately built up quite a large supporting cast over the years. And so uh, there's this whole town of, of characters that I know quite well now. Yeah, absolutely. And so like my last um, like resident alien related question is that you know if you went back in time and you knew that this would someday be turned into a tv show would you do anything different or anything like that no 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 not at all no I, I gave it my best shot you know i've done i've done the best i could with this thing right from day one so i don't think i could have done it any better so and i don't think you needed to like the book has just been brilliant uh, so far but speaking with would you like to see any of your stories or any arts on to, uh, turn into uh, become a part of the tv show well, um, I don't want to give anything away, but Chris and I uh, talked about this, and there is there is uh, one arc that he's kind of interested in using, but I don't know that whether it's going to definitely happen or not. Yeah. Um, but that would be lovely if it did. So we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. And so who wins in a fight, Harry or E.T.? You know, is an neck and <laughs> I think Harry's bigger than E.T., so <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Harry would probably win. Just punching yeah. the football. But that's the end of ET. Um, but yeah, now so of course another comic you got to work on it was Tom Strong. Uh, yeah. so what was that like? That was great. Um, because uh um apart from the fact it's a, I think it's a fantastic character. Alan Alan Moore created this, you know, wonderful um uh, set of characters and and a world i think it's i think it's just a brilliant creation so the chance to actually get hands on with it and to do um, yeah do stories set in that world and with those characters was uh, was wonderful but one of the best things that's happened in my career and um i did a tesla strong story um was the first thing that i did and after that, I did a few issues of um, uh, Tom Strong in the in the main run, and then Alan and I did um, two series of Terror Obscura, which kind of spins out of Tom Strong's world, um, and which um, 
Alan and I co-plotted them and then I, I wrote the scripts. Um, and then after that, I mean, you know, when ABC had kind of all come to an end, um, I got to do two more short mini series of Tom Strong done with Alan's blessing. Um, and, uh, and all of it was wonderful working with Chris Sprouse, uh, who's a fantastic artist. Um, the whole thing was just a joy. And so, like, did you feel a little bit of pressure? Because it's one thing to work on, like, Harry Vanderspiegel, Resident Alien, because he's your character. But when it comes to Tom yeah. Strong, he's created by another person, so you kind of have to carry on that legacy. Did you, so did you feel like, okay, I have to get this right? Yeah, well, you do, yeah. Um, and that's, um, it's a bit daunting, but that's no reason not to do it. Um, but, it, you know, Alan Moore is a very tough act to follow. Um, yeah. So all you can really do is kind of... Um, try and stay true to all the stuff that, you know, he set up and um, follow that. Um, I had, I did have, um, uh, you know, one kind of constellation very early on. When I did the test, the strong story, which was, I think it was 48 pages with about a dozen different artists. And um, at any rate, uh, Melinda, Alan's wife, read it and congratulated him on it because she hadn't looked at the cover and she thought he'd written it. So if I could fool Alan's wife, I think uh, <laughs> hopefully, I, <laughs> hopefully I can fool most people. That, that's a pretty good consolation prize to have, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, so what, what's your favourite aspect about the character of Tom Strong? Well, it's like um, they've got a kind of... Um, um, a kind of purity to them. It's it's a bit like, you know, Alan took all this uh, stuff, all these tropes from Silver Age Superman and then brought it into the modern world with a kind of modern sensibility and a kind of knowingness, but still retained that purity. Um, and there's not many people that could have pulled that off, um, but he did. Yeah, absolutely. And so, like, another question. I'm oh, sorry, go back to Resident Alien. What's your favorite aspect about Harry Van Der Spiegel? That was a question I didn't ask. What's my favorite aspect of him? Yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's quite brave um, and he's curious and he's got a sense of humor. Um, there's lots of things about Harry that I like, you know. Yeah. And so, is like, if there a favorite aspect of Resident Alien to write about, like, was it? you know, the relationship between Asta and Harry, was it like the men in black aspect or was there one thing in particular that you loved writing for? Uh, no, actually, I, I enjoyed all of it. Uh, you know, there wasn't, there, wasn't ever a, an, there wasn't ever an aspect where I thought, oh, no, I've got to do a scene with this guy now and it, it's all <laughs> going to be awful. No, I never felt that about any of it. I, you know, I've, I've enjoyed the whole thing. So my last couple of questions. Uh, if you could work on any comic, you know, what's your dream comic book character or just comic to work on? Um, so many. No, I, I think I've been, I think I've been very lucky in some ways. I mean, I got to work with the Sandman characters, which, you know, again, Neil, Neil Gaiman's Sandman, I think is one of the high points of comics in the last 30 years. Um, so I've been quite lucky with the stuff that I haven't been able to work with. Um, there's lots of stuff that uh, didn't happen. And um, I don't know. I mean, I've got a love for a, a lot of, you know, old superhero characters. I would have loved to have done a Doctor Strange story. Yeah. I would have loved to have done a Fantastic Four story or a Superman story. But, you know, um, I'm not sure I could have done any better than you know, um, anybody else, you know. Uh, I mean, a lot of those characters have been done to death. So to find a new angle on those classic characters is always going to be difficult. Yeah, and so what was it like to get to work on Sandman? Well, it was, the thing was, was that it was, uh, the Dreaming was this comic where you could kind of use any of the kind of Sandman supporting cast, but not the Endless. Um, and uh, the good side to it was you could do lots of different kinds of stories. You could yeah. do stories. I did a story set in ancient Greece. I did a story set in 
1960s London. I did a story set in 1940s London. So it was quite a variety of stuff. And, uh, you know, I was kind of working closely with Neil on the whole thing. We'd have these long phone calls in the middle of the night. Um, so all of that was, um, uh, you know, interesting and uh, sometimes difficult, but also very rewarding. Yeah. And so, like, have you noticed improvement as a writer? Like, do you look back at some of your earlier work and think, oh, I could have done this better or oh, I could have done this? And do you think you've found out more about being a writer? Well, I've definitely found out more about being a writer, but um, the thing I usually find when I look back at old stuff is I'm surprised at how good it is. Um, you know, it's usually it's usually a bit clunky in the execution, or I think, you know, I'll read it and I think, oh, yeah, I could have done that better now. But um, but generally speaking, you know, the, the ideas are all there. They're, you know, most of it's good. It just, uh, it just lacked a... Uh, a bit of polish and experience which yeah. comes with time you know yeah absolutely and so like and my last and final question is if anyone is looking to get into comics what advice would you have for them what uh, comics to read or as a career <laughs> as a career because i think as a career, okay wow. reading them you know yeah it's um well you know it depends what you want out of it uh i mean it's um uh, it's a, it's an interesting world to be a part of, and, and the actual creation of comics is uh, very rewarding. Um, you're not necessarily going to get rich and famous uh, because very few people do. Um, and you know, other than that, it's down to whatever kind of comics you're uh, you want to do or that you get the chance to do. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, you know, I loved Marvel comics when I was a kid, but you know, I only ever got the chance to write one. Uh, I was in and out the door so fast. My feet didn't touch the ground, you know? <laughs> uh, and it was great to have the chance. It was great to have the chance to do it. And, you know, and if they ever asked me again, maybe I'll do some more stuff for them, but it's not necessarily going to, you won't necessarily get the chance to end up on a monthly or whatever. So all you do is uh, you do the best you can with the, the chances that you get. Um, but it's um, a lot of people think it must be about imagination and it is, but it's also about hard work you yeah. know, and yeah. being able to learn, you know, learn from your mistakes. And, you know, if an editor or somebody tells you where you're going wrong, listen to them, you know, and try and do it better next time. Absolutely. And so, um, yeah, so before we finish up, are you on Twitter, Facebook, anything like that? I'm on Facebook, but it's just friends only. Um, I do Instagram. That's about it. Uh, uh, Peter Hogan on Instagram, is it? You know, I can't remember. I get <laughs> <laughs> I get help from my wife and kids for all of that. Stuff, uh, I'm sure. And is there anything you'd like to promote? Uh, the new issue of Resident Alien, uh, Volume 6. Issue? Well, the latest, yeah, the last issue's out. And um, I think as of today, the whole thing is out as a trade paperback. So, wow. Um, Chose a good time to interview you then. So it's a good time, yeah. Yeah, so everyone make sure to go check that out. And thank you all so much for watching. Uh, Peter, it's been such a pleasure having you on. I'll talk to you a little bit after the recording. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next video. Go watch Resident Alien uh, and also go read the comic. It's very good. Um, and, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all next video. Stay safe. And as always, please make sure to donate to National Deaf Children Society. There'll be a link for that down in the description. But uh, stay safe and I'll see you all next video.